Hi guys, welcome back to English 2. So what we're going to be doing today is we're actually going to read the next chapter in Fallen Angels. Now, some of you may choose to use this video to help you out. Some of you may choose not to, which is totally fine. Um, I'm doing this at least for these first few chapters just to kind of help orient you to the book. However, I really do in earnest believe that the other reader in the audiobook is a significantly better reader than me, just because I think he fits the role a lot better. Um, and so we're going to we're going to continue on today. We've met Perry Peewee and Judy Duncan. And so today we're going to meet a few more people and you should be working through the uh, the little character chart that has been added to your thing. If you're not sure how to add a, a, a row, um, just right click into a blank row and it should give you an option to add a row below. All right. Um, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to talk to reach out to me. Um, I'll be online from 12 to 2 tomorrow to answer any questions that you may have and offer assistance if you need it. If you don't, that's totally fine. If you want to pop in and just say hi, that's fine too. Um, just kind of let me know either one way or the other. I'm certainly flexible. I think that's kind of the word of the moment, right? It's flexible. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna change our scene really quick and I'm gonna pull up our reading. As always, I've got the uh, reading on the left, questions on the right uh, in this particular instance. The reading is now black and the questions are now white, but it doesn't really matter. Ultimately, as long as it helps you follow along. All right, so uh, we literally get to meet Perry yesterday and he uh, is just kind of orienting to life in the jungle while getting to the jungle. He meets Pee Wee, who is very much a scrappy young man who isn't really willing to be bullied. And Perry's just not even sure kind of what life looks like yet. Um, he's in Vietnam. It's hot. <laughs> and... He, Perry's very much not sure what to expect. He believes he is there by accident based on a, mi a paper mix-up somewhere else, all right? Because he has a knee injury and shouldn't be on, on the battlefield, all right? So let's just kind of jump into it. Um, I'll try to keep in mind the questions as we go. Um, I think there's only these four for this section, all right? So I will start my timer per usual at 20 minutes and whatever we get through, we get through, all right? All right, so a sergeant came in and put the lights out and then he made a bunch of stupid remarks about what we should and should not do in the dark. And hey, Perry, it was it was Pee Wee. What, what'd you do back in the world? And that's what they're gonna recall the United States is the world. Uh, well, I just got out of school, I said. You didn't finish either? So Pee Wee didn't finish high school. And he said, and Perry goes, no, I finished high school. No lie? No lie. Then why'd you come in the army? Seemed like a good idea at the time, I said. I finished high school, but I hadn't gone to any of the graduation exercises. It just hadn't made any sense anymore. You can go to City College, the guidance counselor had said. Your grades are good enough. And I told her I'd think about it. But what I was thinking about was the fact that I had to get up every morning and dry the clothes I had washed the night before by putting them on the oven door to have something to wear to school. How was I going to get clothes for college? How was I going to get clothes for Kenny so that he could stay in school? Mama had said that she'd see to it that Kenny stayed in school if I sent money home for clothes for him. I wasn't saving any money like uh, the way I figured I would when I first got into the army. But I figured that might come later if I made sergeant, right? So there's one of our big motivations. Perry joins the army because he feels like he really has no other option. I mean, he's bright. He could go to school, but his family can't really afford to send him to school. And he's got a young brother and a mom to look out for. And it sounds like it's just the three of them. I thought of writing a letter to Kenny. He would dig getting a letter from Nam. I remember once he was involved with a pen pal program and got a letter from some kid in Logan, West Virginia. And he had looked at me with these wide, bright eyes and smiled like he couldn't believe the great thing that happened to him. The night before I left for the army, we sat and talked about what we were going to do in the future. No matter what I said, I knew I was going, I knew he was sorry that I was leaving. Richie, he said before we went to sleep, when you get to Vietnam, I hope you guys win. The Monarchs, the neighborhood team that I had played for, just lost a tournament the week before. It had bothered me a lot. I had done well, but and Kenny had said that it wasn't my fault. I'd given him a big speech about basketball being a team sport, that my doing well didn't matter, which I think is something some of you can really relate to. This idea that just because you do well on the battle or on the on the field doesn't necessarily mean that that's how that works. Either the team wins or the team loses, I said. 
I'd wanted so badly to win. I knew it was going to be, I knew I was going into the army, but for me, that was a kind of defeat. My plans, well, maybe just my dreams, really had been to go to college and to write guy, like James Baldwin. All the other guys in the neighborhood thought I was going to college, but I wasn't. The army was the place I was going to get away from all the questions. I wanted to win the tournament, to walk away from the streets I'd been raised in with my head high. A winner. That night I kissed Kenny goodnight. It was the first time I'd kissed him since we were both small. Pee Wee and I had breakfast together, and I asked him if he liked the army, and he said it was okay. He had all this chicken shit to go through, he said, and I don't like that, but this is the first place I've ever been in my life where I got what everybody else got. What do you mean? Well, back home, when everybody else got new sneakers, I didn't get none, Pee Wee said. Either moms didn't have the money, or she had the money, and we had to get something stupid like food. When everybody got a bike, I didn't get one because there was no way we could get the money for the bike. But anything anybody got in the army, I got. You got a gun? I got a gun. You got boots? I got boots. You got to eat this lousy chip, this lousy ass chip beef on toast? Guess what I got to eat? Lousy ass chip beef on toast, I said. Pee Wee's grin just about filled the mess tent. All right. And most of the day was spent sitting around. So so Pee Wee is an interesting bird. Um, whereas Perry was was really interested in maybe furthering his education, but knew that he couldn't. Pee Wee is looking for kind of the great equalizer here. He is more interested in the way that the army will provide to him for a lot of things he's never had versus like trying to escape. He kind of ran to the army as a way for like the good stuff on his end, whereas Perry ran away from the negative, the, the questions. And most of the day was spent sitting around and some of the guys were talking about how hard they had had it in basic training they had all had the same stories no matter where they had taken basic. I thought the stories were probably part of the training. There were a lot of black guys. I didn't think there would be so many. Some of them stayed off to themselves, but one guy was making the rounds with all the other blacks. I love this scene uh, because it shows. So um, if you have not picked up on this, Richie and Pee Wee are actually both African-American. They are both young African-American men in, in the 60s uh, over in Nam. And so there's this black guy, he's going around, um, and he says, the way I figure we got to stick together over here. He had three rings on his hand and he waved it in the air. I can't trust no whitey to watch my back when the deal go down. So what do you want to do, I ask? Well, we got to make an oath or something, Ring said. You know, mingle some blood. That's symbolic of what we're going to be about over here in this strange land. The dude was serious. I watched him take out a knife cut and, knife and cut his wrist and then he handed the knife to Pee Wee. You have got to be out of your mind. Pee-wee said, you're sitting there cutting your own damn self. You don't need nobody watching your back. You don't understand, Ring said. This is symbolic of our common African blood. Yeah, that is cool, but I want to keep my common African blood in my common African veins, Pee-wee said. You're ignorant, Ring's pointed at Pee-wee. Maybe I am, but I ain't bleeding. Ring shook his head and slid the knife across the table. I got hemophilia, I said. If I cut myself, I won't stop bleeding. You and Uncle Tom is what that is. Ring said, if you had some damn hemophilia, they wouldn't have you in no army. He grabbed his knife. If you're not familiar with hemophilia, it's uh, an anti plating or anti, um, like, the blood doesn't clot when you cut yourself. Um, I've only ever really met one person who had hemophilia in my life, um, and he had to be really careful to around, like, knives and stuff. He grabbed his knife and got up and walked away, and I watched him go, that fool is crazy, Pee Wee said. I don't know, he might have something. I said, well, whatever he got, he can sure keep it, set up the checkers. And we played checkers till it was time for chow, the same way we had the day before. Then we ate chow, then we played checkers in the afternoon. Another black guy, a specialist from fourth class, came over and joined me in Pee Wee. He asked me where we were from, and we told him, I'm from Monroe, Louisiana. You ever heard of it? No, Pee Wee said. Ain't much, up, ain't much to it, he said. How long have you been in the country? You mean this country? You don't have to say nothing, he said. He just told me. How long have you been here, Pee Wee asked. Well, I've been here nine months. I got sick, and then they sent me to a hospital over in the Philippines. You ever been in the hospital? Well, we just got here, Pee-wee said. How are we going to get in the hospital? You just getting here don't mean nothing, the spec whore said. I seen a guy drop dead getting off the plane from Hawaii. The plane come down, landed as pretty as you damn please. He come out, took a good look around, and dropped stone dead. What kind of outfit were you in, Pee-wee asked. Well, I was in the 24th, uh, 24th Transportation Battalion, but I put in for a transfer because I had a run-in with my commanding officer. What kind of run-in? I was high on guard duty, the spec whore said. My pal bought in some smoke from Saigon and we all got stoned. So what are you doing now? Well, they gave me a choice, transfer or court-martial, he said. So you know I got to transfer because I can't stand no jail time. You been in any fighting, Pee-wee asked. They just, they didn't have no fighting around Cameron Bay, was the answer. <sighs> they had more fighting in the juke joint outside of Fort Eustis than i seen in any of my time over here. It sounded good. Pee-wee and the Spec 4 played checkers for a while and then played it with an Italian from Connecticut, and he told them what the Spec 4 had said about not seeing any fighting. 
Or we told him. I heard it was over anyway, the guy said. They're supposed to be signing some truce or something in Paris. That's because they heard I was here, Pee-wee said, with a real serious look on his face. The Italian guy looked at me and then looked at Pee-wee and shrugged, and I was getting to like Pee-wee. They showed a movie in the day room and passed out some beer. Three guys from each hooch, which is what they called the barracks, had to pull guard duty, and the ranger volunteered for it. They had beer in the day room and a ping-pong table, and there was a line for the ping-pong table, so they watched the news from the States. But they didn't mention anything about Nam. The next morning, about half our hooch got their orders. Most of us were going to some place called Coochie. Um, the rest of us sat around and played three or four-man basketball. Let's go to town, Pee-wee said. Where's town? Pee-wee went in to the HQ hooch to find out what town we were... What town was just as they were looking where town was just as they were looking for somebody else to pull guard duty and he got pulled he got put on i went back to our hooch and wrote my first letter to kenny and i told him that i had heard that there was going to be a truce and that there wouldn't be any more fighting i also told him i wouldn't bring i would bring back a souvenir if i could it was saturday my ninth day in the country the army paper stars and stripes was full of truce talks in paris but the war was still going on in the distance f-100s streaked across the sky and i saw a lot of planes mostly jets and helicopters and all ours. I didn't see any enemy planes. I didn't even know if they had any. Yo, Perry. What? When are you going to get us into this war, man? We have to get oriented first, I said. I heard there was an orient that the orientation officer broke his ankle playing basketball. He probably a damn he's probably a damn Kong, said Pee Wee. You ready to get into it? Yeah. Or yeah. Damn straight, Pee Wee said. We gotta get into this before it's over. I was less nervous than I was when I first got into the country. We were in Nam to stop the North Vietnamese from taking over South Vietnam. I didn't really feel like it didn't really feel gung-ho or anything, but I was ready to do my part. One of the new guys came in from Fort Dix. He was looking at, he looked like one of those characters from an Archie Andrews comic, but he was so scared it wasn't funny, and he told us his name was Jenkins. So you guys can definitely add both the Jenkins and Monroe. You can add some description for these two. Um, both are going to uh, have important parts in this novel, so it is important that you make, make sure. So as of right now, Perry, Pee Wee, Jenkins, and Monroe are all kind of like lower uh, rank GIs. Um, so just kind of keep an eye out for that. I know one guy said he's a spec for. I'm not super well versed in army lingo. So if you want to comment underneath this video what that means, I'd love that. Uh, what's it like so far? He asked Pee Wee. Well, ain't nothing to it, Pee Wee said. You been here long? Jenkins asked. Well, eight months, Pee Wee lied. I gotta kill eight more con before I get my quota, then I can go home. So Pee Wee tries to deal with all of this by like humor. He's like, how much mischief can I basically cause you know you got rings running around trying to mingle blood you got Perry just trying to like survive and then you got Pee Wee over here just like messing with as many people as humanly possible so he decides to tell Jenkins even though they've only been there nine days that he's been there for eight months so eight months Pee Wee lied I gotta kill eight more Kong before I get my quota then I can go home well how many killed so far 132 Pee Wee said I weigh 140 whatever you weigh that's how many you gotta kill to leave early Never heard of that, Jenkins said. Well, it ain't for regular rotation, Pee Wee Allen. That's just so you can leave early. Oh, Jenkins took it all in. Air Force guys get their quote in like one or two days, Pee Wee said. What'd you do, machine gun most of them, Jenkins? Eyes were wide. No, man, Pee Wee shook his head. The tissue, they issue so many bullets per week, but for each one you turn back in, you get a quarter. So mostly I sneak up on the suckers and cut their throats. That way I save my bullets. Way I figure by the time I get back to the world, I'll have enough to buy a little Chevy. None of that is true, Jenkins said. He was pissed at Pee Wee for pulling his leg. The sergeant came in and picked three guys for guard duty. The ranger volunteered again, and then they got Jenkins and one other guy. Jenkins was shaking when he left. Don't forget to save your bullets, Pee Wee called out. That night, the mosquitoes ate us up. I had bites all over my back, my body. Back home, I thought mosquitoes never bit black people. Not as much as they bit white people, anyway. Maybe Vietnamese mosquitoes just bit blacks and whites, but didn't bite Asians. We finally got the orientation lecture. This young-looking lieutenant showed us a slide from the, of a map of Nam. And when he showed us where we were... You are not in Disneyland, he said. The little people run you see running over here are not Mouseketeers. Some of them are friendly. Some of them have a strong desire to kill you. And if you remember that and manage to kill them before they kill you, you have a good chance to get through your year of service over here. Take your pills once a week for malaria, twice a week if you're stupid to remember the last day you took your you, the last day you took them. Stay away from the women. They got venereal diseases over here that eat penicillin for breakfast. Three quarters of the women over here have it. They got crabs over here that line up every morning to get a shot of DDT. It wakes them up and starts their day. Stay away from the black market. Anything you buy that's worth a damn will be taken away from you, or you'll lose it. Stay away from dope. There's only two kinds of people in them. People who are alert 24 hours a day, and people who are dead. And if you see anything else that they got over here that we don't have at home, stay away from it. 
What these people use on a daily basis will kill you as fast as an RPG. What's an RPG? A guy in the front asked. It's a rocket propelled grenade. Stay away from them too. If you got any questions, ask your unit commanders and when you reach them, when you reach them, good luck. When we got outside, the mosquitoes got us. The lieutenant hadn't even mentioned them, but we had been given a supply of mosquito repellent. Orders. Me, Pee Wee, me, Pee Wee Jenkins, and another guy were assigned to the 196. We were going to Chulai. I remembered when Judy Duncan, that was where Judy Duncan was assigned. What's that like? Jenkins asked the sergeant in the headquarters. That's First Corp. The sergeant said, all you do up there is look around for Charlie, and when you see him, you call the Marines. Light stuff. Charlie? Jenkins looked for, toward me and Pee Wee. Charlie's the bad guy over here. The sergeant put his arm around Jenkins' shoulder. They were obviously, he was obviously enjoying himself. Sometimes we call him Charlie, sometimes we call him Victor Charlie, sometimes we call him Viet Cong. That is unless he stands, sends us his business card with his full name and address upon it. We packed our gear and lined up outside, waiting for the truck to the airport. We were going to Chu Lai in a C-47. I thought the guys from the Hooches were going, but there was only four of us. I bet I kill a Kong before you get one, Pee-wee said. You can have them all, I said. You scared? Yeah, I said. You ain't scared? No, man, I'm just surprised. Pee-wee said, I didn't think there was going to be any real fighting in this war. It's a really common sentiment that comes around at wartime. I mean, even think about back as early as the Civil War where people would, would like show up with picnics to watch battles. A lot of people don't realize how severe and scary war can really be. How come? I tell you how I got into this, miss? Uh-uh. Well, me and this dude I used to hang out with sometimes, so this is Pee-wee talking. Me and this dude I used to hang out with sometimes was in front of the projects where I lived, and he said to me he was going to join the army. So he said, come down onto the recruiting office with him. He was sitting on his gear, picking out his hair. So we go on down, and the recruitment office sergeant asks him if he ever got into any trouble. Stick, that was this guy's name, said, yeah, he'd already done shot himself four or five people. Now, the recruiting sergeant said that they can't get in, he can't get into the army because they don't take no rowdy dudes like him. And I figured if they don't take no rowdy dudes, the army had to be pretty cool. They really meant to be doing a whole lot of killing and carrying on. They should get them suckers from the projects because that's all they like to do anyway. So you joined up? Yeah, Pee-wee said, but I think I got tricked. Pee-wee looked out of the trucks, which were mostly packed with crates of rations and supplies. The land beyond them was flat as far as one, as one could see in one direction. And the other direction there was the action, was where we thought the action would be. There were mountains shrouded in haze. Hey, we'll be staying rowdy, I said. Pee-wee looked at me and smiled. Yo, you remember that brother that wanted, like, mingle blood and stuff? Yeah. Well, maybe we could do something like that with spit or something, he said. He spit on his hand and held it up. I spit on mine and when he exchanged fives. It felt good. Pee-wee didn't say much after that, neither did I. I was scared. My mouth was going dry. I couldn't see that Pee-wee was, and I could see Pee-wee was a little scared, too. Jenkins was crying. It made me feel better to see him crying like that. We'll load him up. And me and Pee-wee got into the trucks behind, between boxes of peanut butter and started to the airport and wherever the hell Chu Lai was. All right, so... Perry talks a little bit about his his kind of initial perceptions of the army. I mean, think about the airport incident. Think about him just kind of waiting around. Um, there's a, kind of a lot of things that are happening, and it's not um, it's not an easy decision to make uh, joining the army. But it seems like we have two very different people who joined for two very different reasons. Oops, sorry. Two very different reasons. That's what I get for talking with my hands. Um, and so you're going to answer the four questions on the right. You should have, um, you should have, you should add at least Judy Duncan um, as well. And then you're going to have just a little bit about Monroe and that's it. All right. We'll get to more of these tomorrow um, or um, next week when I kind of get a, a reading schedule ready. So do, uh, keep an eye out for that. But if you need any help at all with either the, the web quest or this, let me know. Um, that's what I'm here for. All right. Have a great day, guys, and I will see you later.